What up nerds, my name's Ryan. I did my HSE in 2019 and in this video, I'm going to guide you through circular motion theory part one. Click the link in the top right to be taken to the full module five HSC physics playlist. So in this video, first I'm just gonna explain the big picture of what you'll be learning in this video. So there are two main sides of what you're learning in this video. One side is the theoretical side and the other side is the mathematical side. The theoretical side is trying to answer the question of why do objects move in circles? And what we're going to learn about is uniform circular motion as a concept, centripetal force, and angular velocity. Those are the three theoretical things that we are going to learn throughout the course of this video. Related to these concepts are three important equations that you need to know. This is an equation for what's called tangential velocity, which I'll talk about in the uniform circular motion part. This is an equation for centripetal force, which I'll obviously talk about in the centripetal force part. And then this is the equation for angular velocity. So I'm gonna explain the theoretical side of it and then show the particular equation that's linked to that piece of theory. All right, so firstly, uniform circular motion. Imagine we have an object, this red ball right here. And imagine that this object is moving in a circular path. If it's, this red object is moving in a circular path clockwise, so it's going around in the clockwise direction. Well, so far we've got the motion part of it. So we have an object that is in motion and the motion that the object is in is circular. So we've got the circular motion part, but the critical piece of understanding what uniform circular motion is, is the uniform word. Now, what is uniform when we have the object moving around in the circle? Well, when you see uniform circular motion, it means that the object is moving at a constant speed. And notice that I didn't say constant velocity. That's because it's not actually a constant velocity because the direction of the ball changes, the direction of the velocity vector changes, even if its magnitude remains the same. So what do I mean by that? Well, this red ball in its current position is going to have a tangential velocity, tangential just meaning at a tangent to the circular path that it's moving on. It's going to have some tangential velocity V. And let's say that this is at T equals zero seconds. Then let's say that we consider the ball in this position down here. It will also have a velocity v pointing in this direction, still tangential to the circle, but in a different direction than it was pointing initially at this position. So it still has some velocity. And let's say that this occurs at t equals one. Now the magnitude of this velocity remains the same. And that's why that's the constant speed so that the the magnitude of this velocity vector remains the same. It has a constant speed. But the reason that we say it doesn't have a constant velocity is because the direction of the velocity vector has changed. As it moves around the circle, the object's velocity vector changes direction. So I'll draw a couple other points on the circle just really quickly. So you can see here we had t equals zero, we had a velocity vector pointing in this direction. t equals one, we have a velocity vector pointing in this direction. t equals two, we have a velocity vector pointing in that direction. t equals three, we have a velocity vector pointing in that direction. The magnitude of the velocity vector remains the same, constant speed, but the direction changes. That's the critical piece of knowledge that you need to underpin all of this uniform circular motion theory. All right, so now that we've got that concept, I will take this circle, copy it and move it down to the next topic, which is centripetal force. So if our velocity is changing, not in magnitude, but in direction, if we have a changing velocity, what does that mean? If over time a velocity is changing, what do we have? So a changing velocity over a change in time implies that we have some acceleration. And when a object is moving in a circle at a constant speed, this acceleration is known as the centripetal acceleration. And at all points of the object's movement, this centripetal acceleration is pointing into the center of the circular path. So at all points of the object's motion, the centripetal acceleration is pointing into the center of the object's circular path. So AC, AC. These are all centripetal accelerations. Now, I'll just keep one of them for the sake of simplicity. When we have circular motion, the centripetal acceleration is given by the formula V, so the tangential velocity squared divided by R, where R is just the radius of this circular path. 
r is just this the radius of the circle here roughly that's roughly the radius now you'll notice that this section of theory is not entitled centripetal acceleration it's entitled centripetal force that's because if you have an object with mass that is accelerating, that implies that there exists a force that is causing the mass to accelerate. So if there is a mass accelerating, that implies that there is a force causing that mass to accelerate. And this force, in the context of uniform circular motion, is called the centripetal force. That is the force that is causing the object to move in the circular path. And we know from year 11 that F is equal to M multiplied by A mass multiplied by acceleration. In this case, our mass is the red object here at these various points. It's the red object that has the mass. And our A is what I was just talking about up here, the centripetal acceleration. And we have an expression for centripetal acceleration. So if we want a more comprehensive formula for the centripetal force, we can just put this equation into this A here. And that will leave us with the centripetal force is equal to mass from this part here multiplied by V, the tangential velocity of the object, squared divided by the radius. And this is the most critical formula in the entire circular motion topic. F equals mv squared over r. If you know this formula, you will be able to answer a vast majority of the questions. This is the 20% of circular motion that answers 80% of the questions, right? This is the 20% of effort that you need to put in to know 80% of the circular motion answers. All right, and this force is going to be in the same direction as the centripetal acceleration. So the centripetal force is also always pointing inwards to the center of the circular path. Again, if you take away anything from this video, let it be this, F equals MV squared over R. That's gonna be drilled into your brain by the end of the next you know, 10 months or so. And then so again, I will take a copy of this circular motion and move it down to our next topic, which is angular velocity. This one shouldn't be too difficult to understand. It's just another concept that's necessary. I'm gonna clean up this circle a little bit because we don't need everything that's here at the moment. So we already know what the tangential velocity refers to. So tangential velocity just refers to the, the thing that I've been coloring blue, right? The V in the previous example. So the velocity of the object that is tangential to the circular path. It is really just the, the velocity of the object, the, no, the way that we would consider velocity normally. The angular velocity is a little bit different. So the tangential velocity is really the change in distance over time, the change in displacement over time, more specifically. Whereas the angular velocity is the change in a particular angle over time, over a change in time, I should say. And so if you imagine drawing a line from the position of the object to the center of the circle, and you do that at one instance in time, so at t equals zero and t equals one. And actually I'm going to, I'm gonna change those values a little bit to emphasize a point a bit later. Let's make that t equal one and t equals four. If you draw a line from each of those positions to the center of the circle, you'll form some angle here, theta, which in this case, let's just say equals 90 degrees. So this angle here, theta is equal to t degrees. It's roughly equal to 90 degrees. The angular velocity, typically notated with this lowercase w, refers to the change in the angle over the time that it took for that change to occur. So similarly how tangential velocity is a change in displacement over the time that it took for that change in displacement to occur, angular velocity, w, is equal to the change in the angle theta divided by the change in time over which the change in angle took place. In this case here, on the right, we have the change in angle was initially zero degrees and then it was increasing, increasing 45, blah, 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 90 degrees. So the change in angle was 90 degrees divided by the change in time. And now t equals four is the final time. t equals one is the initial time of the two points that we're considering. So the change in time will be four minus one. And four minus one is three and 90 divided by three is just 30, and this would be degrees per second clockwise. So 
30 is the magnitude of the vector, degrees per second is the units, and clockwise is the way that you can notate the direction of movement. All right, and that's basically it. That's the bread and butter theory for uniform circular motion. In the next video, I go through common questions that can be answered with this theory alone. So circular motion, common questions, part one. And this second link takes you to the module five advanced mechanics playlist. So good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.